I, I'm like on the sand with the surfboard and I'm like trying to polish and I'm like, what's the right surfboard? Right. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, multiple yep. amazing waves have been passing through and I'm just like sitting at the on the on the sand just thinking like, well, I don't know if this is the right surfboard and is this the right color for me? Yeah. When it, meanwhile, the color doesn't actually affect how well you ride that wave. Hey, I'm Joe Fear and welcome to the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast. This is where we talk all about building businesses so they give you the freedom and fuel for your life. I'm not here to help you build a billion dollar business, but I am here to help you create a business with systems that work for you so you can make more money than you need just by working part time. You know, I was a chronic hustle mode kind of guy and I want to share my experiences and mentors I've met along the way to help you reframe things to be the most effective as an entrepreneur. I wish I had this guidance and insight when I was younger. So that's what I'm doing here for you. Please share and enjoy. Hello, we are back. This episode is going to be another fun one. And I have my friend Dave Muntner. He also goes by Davey Harris on Spotify. He's a songwriter, musician over there. And he's also in the, the marketing, copywriting space, runs an agency called Renaissance Messaging. And this guy is fascinating. So in this episode, we, we cover a lot of different spectrums. So we talk about copywriting and marketing and, and doing that whole thing. And we also talk about personal development and how music and songwriting kind of relates to everything there. It's kind of this lump bag here. And and really on the music side and songwriting, it's it's very fascinating because it goes to really expressing ourselves. And that, that comes out in business, it comes out in copywriting, of course, and and how we carry ourselves, how we show ourselves off to the world. And that's where Dave, he really talks about in depth, a lot of ways of how he's navigated that and how he's also collaborated with some amazing organizations and produces music and is starting to release. And actually, just as of yesterday, released a new song on Spotify. I'll make sure to link it inside of the show notes. So make sure you, you go to hustleandflowchart.com and find this episode. So this is going to be a great one. And Dave also helps people write songs and create these these songs, even if you don't have a background in music. So he'll talk about that, of how you can join him. And and again, and that's at the end of the episode. But I want to just point that out here because it's it's unique. It's fascinating. I haven't heard of this before. And I think Dave is like the perfect guy to do that because of his background and experience and the fact that he does it actively every day. So check out the show notes for all the links and how to contact Dave and, um, and enjoy this one. I think it'll have a lot of pops of insights and different ways to look at situations and ways that you might be navigating your life in business and how music and songwriting or just writing in general too can really open up some things for you. And remember to share your art, share it. Don't just hoard it to yourself. That's not fair, all right? And I'm telling myself that as I look at my guitar right now. Okay, so let's go chat with Dave. See you. Dave, we are live, we're not live. We are live, you and I are live, but someone may be listening to this in the future. <laughs> that's that's accurate. So we're doing this, man. We're finally doing this thing. We've been chatting a while, man. It's happy that you're here. We had we had the podcast before the podcast. We did a few of them, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, yeah. Got to give a shout out to our boys Trevor and Mike who connected us. And oh, I, yeah. you know, we've always it seems like we've been circling around similar you know characters and business and maybe music too. And yeah, it's gonna be fun because I yeah, it's just been like it's a natural progression. It's like podcast. Let's go share this with others. I like how you said we've been circling around different characters you know as opposed to people yeah uh because i i think once you've really established yourself in any arena or area you you transform your identity from person to a character mm. slash caricature yeah. um, but it actually is a sign of like you've done something right that you you have a distinct persona out there so why do you I, think it's a compliment yeah i guess it is because like my brain goes to is it a mask are we hiding behind something it can be caricature big nose big ears i don't know uh, yeah <laughs> how does that show because we were just talking about that that there's these identities we play you know and I think you're so unique and the more I get to know you and I'll, I'm sure I'll learn a lot more in this one because there's a lot mm -hmm. of surprises hiding behind all of her. And yeah, it's like I was introduced to you as, well, a man first, you know, the group. <laughs> but then it's like, hey, this, you know, Dave's in marketing. 
Dave does copywriting. All right, cool. You know, that's like Trevor and Mike kind of paired us up, I think, in this, you know, in the group that that we're part of. And then quickly it was like, oh, music. Holy shit. Dave is also Davey and has an amazing, you just have, I think, multiple albums, but a ton of songs, music videos. They're catchy. That's why I was like a couple minutes late to even join here. I was like, ah, I got caught up in your music video. Sorry. Yeah. If you <laughs> want to be late to something, listen to my music. <laughs> it's a great excuse. Yeah. And true. I guess, where do we start? Like, where would, where do you want to start with this? Yeah. Well, I, one of the things is considering what, what I can share from my perspective that would be helpful for you or mm-hmm. for an individual listening and you know, perhaps we can start with the conversation we had right beforehand. And it had to do with character, caricature, persona. And I was sharing that I am not going through an identity crisis, but more so identity discovery, and and perhaps even just choosing with full alignment that identity. So I've been on other podcasts and or had other interviews where I'm Dave, the CEO, copywriter, executive. And then I've also had other conversations and or interviews where I'm Davey, the musician. And neither of those actually feel very authentic to me because you're 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 really leaning in on one version of yourself, but you're not necessarily tapping the reservoir of the other parts of who you are. So this is a fun conversation where, you know, I'm more so just, you know, spilling all of the different goo behind the masks uh, and, you know, seeing what comes through. And I think this will be helpful for me, perhaps helpful for you and helpful for any individuals who listen from the future. Yeah, man. I think it's, yeah, because we all have these different elements and, and, it is like we're a melting pot and it's up to us if we want to, how, however we present ourselves. But I feel like like what you do in songwriting relates to what you do in copywriting, I would imagine. And mm-hmm. it's telling a story. It's how you communicate everything, I would imagine. So maybe it's that. Like, do you want to start with like, how did that come to be for you? Because I know that's a big, I think that's like where your heart truly is, is that writing element. Yeah, I'll give my life story. In, uh, 60 60 seconds a bridge, of course I, i'm time i'm time blind so that it could be 60 minutes but i think it's gonna be 60 seconds so i had been drawn to music from an early age and i think that was from my parents being like yo you should play piano i wanted to play any other instrument but the piano was the piano we had in the house and so that was the one that i would learn from and very quickly i realized that i hated reading music and i didn't really like playing other people's music so much as creating my own random stuff. It was, you know, I was told it was kind of like a weirder version of elevator music <laughs> that I was just playing on the <laughs> piano. Chill, and, but a little out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was kind of messy, but it was interesting. And, and you know, it's almost like, where do you go from here? You're just writing your own little melodies. And is it more so just a way to relax? Because I would use it as, you know, for therapeutic reasons. Like I'd go to my piano and play whatever the hell I was playing. And then whatever bothered me at school that day or something else, it lost its power. And I just kind of fell into that space. So that was that was the use of piano. And then I don't know, kind of put down the music was and went went to college and um, became went into creative writing because I mm. you know I thought that would be like an interesting field. I liked to write and create, right? And then it was only you know I joined a band and that was really exciting. That's actually the shirt, the tins, and that was oh, nice. my focus on, in life after that point for the next ten years. It was being in a band as the drummer of this band because my dream was always to be a drummer didn't necessarily connect the dots of being a songwriter as much and also didn't necessarily think I was a singer like I my high aspiration and dream was man I wonder what it'd be like if I could sing and I'd listen to some of my favorite music growing up and even you know artists like the Beatles or Led Zeppelin or at the time Pearl Jam was really cool and I was like I wonder what it'd be like if I could sing and then I would I try to to sing to other artists and songs and hear my own voice and be like, man, I sound horrible. <laughs> like, I guess, yeah. you know, but but still like that wish, like, what if I could? And, you know, throughout that journey, took song lessons, whatever else, singing lessons, never, never felt super confident. But I'm just like kind of flashing forwards yeah, a yeah. lot. I entered into the digital marketing space because they, you know, I first went into personal development. And they, they said that like personal development is the gateway drug for entrepreneurship and so uh, as I was more discovering myself and you know what I could do I would be like oh I want to be more entrepreneurial and then that led to the arena of marketing and I explored SEO and other realms of marketing and realized copywriting was a really cool space to land in 
because I was able to share storytelling and getting clear on somebody's message and knowing that like simplicity sells. And then also working with thought leaders and influencers and getting clear on what their core message is. So I, again, I'm just kind of, you know, shifting and giving a, a very yeah. skewed narrative right now, but it gets the job done. I think of where, where we're at today is, is almost a blend of the learning of the importance of lyrics and copywriting and with the importance of, of us, the power of music and magic. And yeah, so, so today I wear multiple hats, mm -hmm. one running a marketing firm with multiple writers and designers and cre creatives, which is really cool. Uh, and that's had its ups and downs and still figuring out that journey. And then also being my musician, writing my own music. And that's been fun. I'm now committed to releasing a song at the greatest intervals of six weeks apart. Like from now indefinitely, wow. I'm sitting on so many songs. Like it's, wow, uh, really? which is one of those things about perfectionism versus procrastination of writing a lot of music. Like the last song I released was in January mm -hmm. and I'm sitting on 30 to 50 nearly completed songs. Wow. And then you're like, what do I, you know, my ego's like, I don't want to release a song now. And then no one hears it. So I'm like, I'll save it for the right moment but there is no right moment. And then what happens is like months and months go by and you're like, oh, well, all that's happened is I didn't release this thing because I'm too precious over it. And so I love the space for my little monologue here of figuring myself out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but yeah, so where we're at now, I committed to releasing my songs and building momentum in that area. And I, I always want to say like, oh, this is the time where I'll figure out who I am. And this is the perfect <laughs> alarm. Like I am this musician, you know, because you'll have different people that tell you this is who you are, you know, based on what they're hearing or I am this person. And that never felt true. Like, I'd like to share, there's the, the saying of putting the mess, your your mess is your message. I, I've been referred to as a bizarro yeah. version, like of my own savior. So I say I put the mess in Messiah for myself. Yeah, I like it. Um, and, and yeah, so I'd say I'm continuously this goo. And as opposed to attempting to be somebody else, it's more of like, I'm a fucking shapeshifter. Yeah. You know, like I, right. it's hard for me to say anything else. And so all I could do is have different spaces of like, I'm going to kick ass and go all in on this one area. And that was... So that, that's been cool. But the final piece here is I've been writing songs, becoming an amplifier for certain individuals and causes. And that's been something, it's almost like taking the, what I've learned from copywriting and messaging and applying that to music and attempting, you know, like I wrote the song, The Penguin Dance. Yeah, uh, it's for, catchy, man. Yeah, The Penguin Dance. For a a ASOC, the Antarctic and Southern o Ocean Coalition, I wrote a song about honeybees. Uh, the song I'm releasing next on June 6th is a song for the empowered woman. It's called The League. And... A lot of these songs are echoing insights from extraordinary people. And so that's that's a fun component. I want to say like all of these things fit perfectly together. Maybe they do, but that is my current mess <laughs> in the in the journey. The puddle. I love the mess. Yeah. And, and there's something special with sharing that mess, like you said. And and like I know I held a lot of ideas for so long on this podcast, knowing that this is a distribution center, you know, outlet for me and for others. Like if I'm not sharing, then it's like, I know there's some relations not happening, that connection with the listener and same with music. I mean, and, and copy, like all this stuff, it's all just release it and it's not going to be perfect, but we can build. And it reminds me of a buddy of mine. He's he was on the show a long time ago. His name is Ori Bengal. I don't know if you know him. He's, you would love Not the guy. Yet. I mean, yeah, you, yeah, look him up. And people just love him because of personality. And, but he releases a piece of art every single day. And he's done that for, shoot, I don't know, many years now. And it's like thousands and thousands of pieces. And you just see the evolution of this art turn into like pretty basic stuff to now like sculptures and crazy rent. And like, you're just like, what the? And it's all through daily practice and releasing that and sharing it and getting feedback, probably not like, you know, asking for it, but you're just putting it out there. I'm like, man, there's something magical in just doing that. Yeah. And it takes a certain degree of courage. Yeah. And I'm like that individual that some days I feel super empowered. I'm like, I want to re release it all, anything, even these half finished song ideas. Let's go. I want to share the process. That's interesting. Yeah. And then the next day I'm like cowering and like, what did I do? Why did I share? You know, it's so embarrassing. And then. Yeah realizing most people don't even care and if you're able to catch someone's attention in any which way it's most likely going to benefit them oh, benefit yeah. you so yeah. uh my higher self is was speaking just then yeah yeah <laughs> we all have those those selves though you know and, uh -huh. yeah. and these 
there was something that uh you said simplicity sells and you're like copywriting that's definitely accurate you know as a copywriter and i would imagine even as a songwriter as well and like is there how do you battle that like to keep it simple when you probably have so many ideas especially with music then you're like layering on that you know the the actual notes and instruments on top of song or you know lyrics that you write yeah i'm like that person that gets gets an opportunity to be aware of a lot of things and then may or may not make any changes based on that awareness what i what i mean by that is you know simplicity sells and if you look at some of the strongest iconic music brands that are out there there is an aura and an essence that is pure and potent and with my own persona caricature character brand you know for Davy Harris I would say right now it's very sloppy and it's not actually simple and the way I write songs is not actually simple and the songs I want to share and release are not actually simple <laughs> and so that that is the dichotomy or the duality of this understanding marketing and then being like okay now let's apply this to art and then the, every time that I'm like off a little bit or feel like I'm sacrificing something that you know I think this could be ego or it could be my higher self you know, but it's like sacrificing this piece of integrity is like oh I want to serve somebody else versus like your own muse or that higher yeah. intent uh things get cloudy so at least right now the phase is more of a trust of you know I'm that goo and not necessarily attempting to shape it too much and you know I guess hoping that the right people can connect to that whoever those are because obviously you know your audience it's a lot easier to write a song when I'm doing songs for different individuals it's I can almost like super microscopically tailor a song to a yeah. particular cause or person or whatever else and then it works in that space and then as you know, Davy Harris or whatever else, it becomes more of a, I don't, these two songs don't quite make sense together, yeah. like in the same landscape. And, and, you know, I've shared with you that I have, you know, 30 to 50 other songs and they're quite different. You know, the ones that, yes. that will be released, that has been maybe some hesitation on my part of, well, is this too confusing or if someone likes one thing, will they like the other thing or, and mostly it doesn't fucking matter. It's more of just releasing it, you know? So my new presence practice is giving myself daily lobotomies Mm. where I'm like, oh, this is a moment where I'm thinking too much. And let me just like take my little scissors and like cut around that thought and then have it evaporate. Interesting. Um, yeah. Is that like is a it, visual thing that you are like a mental? Yeah, like, like in, you know, neuro-linguistic programming you're doing yourself that may or may not work out. Yeah, because they say like in sales, right? You sell something and then as you keep talking, you like buy it back. Right. Yep. And it's the same thing with your own psychology of like overthinking to the point of you know, paralysis by analysis. And, you know, you, I think, are, I wouldn't say you're an overthinker, but you're an active thinker, mm -hmm. right? And most likely a lot of individuals listening here are active thinkers. And that can be a version of overthinking to the point of actually you have, you have an excess of thoughts that are now just stapping energy and preventing you from taking that next step. And so, yeah. you know, even, even this conversation is more of like claiming the momentum and knowing that for me, that's the, that's like the wave for the surfboard, mm. you know, you, you can keep going, the more waves you have, the more you can surf. And I think I'm at a point almost right now where I, I'm like on the sand with the surfboard and I'm like trying to polish and I'm like, what's the right surfboard, right? Mm. Meanwhile, multiple yep. amazing waves have been passing through and I'm just like sitting at the, on the, on the sand, just thinking like, well, I don't know if this is the right surfboard and is this the right color for me? Yeah, but it, huh? meanwhile, the color doesn't actually affect how well you ride that way. I like to use surfing analogies because it makes me pretend that I'm a surfer. <laughs> when in, in reality, I'm not. And this is one thing. My, my profile picture at one point, Facebook, uh, back in the day, was me holding a surfboard and looking super cool. And, you know, some people were like, wow, I didn't know you surfed and like sharing their surfing stories. And I was like, yeah, when it was, in fact, the one day I ever surfed in my life. Yeah, and sick, before, bra, hit yeah, the waves. <laughs> before the very embarrassing experience of like trying to get on the surfboard and falling off or whatever but i had a moment where i looked really cool yeah. and was surfing with the person she was a photographer and so i was like i got a good shot and that's just more of the persona yeah in, in authenticity that is fun to identify and laugh well, at. i feel like most people have that like we can all relate to those moments and those things those like maybe snapshots of what we thought we are or how we present ourselves and it, it was probably an idea just like anything is and you talk about the wave and i've been listening to and reading some jordan peterson stuff and there's there's this 
audio that I've heard him say is like, you are not the wave, but you can ride that wave. And this is like how he frames it to himself when he's talking to thousands of people or whatever. He's like, they're not here for me. It's because there's something that's relating and it's like music. There's like connecting. So don't take it as like an ego thing. Like, ha ha ha, look at me. It's like, no, you're just providing like your channel for this thing, the momentum. And so like, you're not the wave, but like go ride the fucking wave, you know, and do your best on that wave. So if it's an idea, yeah, lobotomize that thing, maybe capture it if it's good. If you feel like it's good enough, I guess, and do something with it. Maybe write, write that song, write that headline for sales page that you've been freaking mulling over. You want to split test. Yeah, you know, like just just do it and do it to an extent and then stop talking. <laughs> you know, it's like the sales call. Do the pitch, shut up. Yeah, and I guess that's one thing that pops up as you're, you're sharing that, which there are so many lessons and gifts from doing marketing. Mm. You know, the ready, fire, aim approach and testing and not making silly assumptions. You know, not working on one campaign for two years before actually sharing it, especially knowing how the landscapes, you know, in this world change so quickly. But so with music and with art, there's that other dance of, you know, high, like there's this concept of high art or true art or whatever different terms for it. And like someone was sharing like the pyramids were high art, right? It's this almost this version of like, you know, it stands the test of time. And for those, those are the things you don't split test because you're like, it's so true and so powerful and potent. Can't question it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sharing that not to share that I have any answers or whatever else, but more so that is a duality space I'm currently hanging out in and and figuring out and navigating. Yeah. It's interesting, man. But that's the being human, I guess, and being a creative and one that knows how to publish and, you know, share art maybe at scale where, you know, you can get a lot of feedback, especially if you ask for it and if that's what you're intending for. And yeah, it must be interesting with music too, especially with spanning so many genres, testing, you know, collaborating with so many different people, organizations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like you're not you're going to get all sorts of input if that's what you were seeking. And mm -hmm. yeah, that could totally take you off of your own wave. You know, like the thing that is actually you, whatever that you is, <laughs> you know, and it could stop the flow of great ideas and future creations. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good point. I'll be reflecting on later of because I'm such a, an accomplished surfer uh, yeah. that there's all the different waves in the ocean and some of them are really tiny and some are like the big one. And you may be riding tiny waves thinking that they're the biggest ones. And it's like, once you ride that wave, you ride it until you stop right. when there could be a bigger one. So a question that popped up for you, just because it'd be interesting to ask you, for sure. you being both a creative and artist, and then also a marketing maven among many other things. And so has there ever been a time where you've created, you know, something that's creative or artistic and it was, you didn't think about it as though, oh, I'm going to test this, but more so in your gut, you were like, this feels right. Like, this is the wave that I'm going to ride, at least to the shore. Like, I'm mm -hmm. curious if you've ever had that experience with something. Yeah, I mean, something, it's timely now because I just about to release it today as of this recording. And it's relating to my business in this podcast is creating this um, AI chatbot around the show is packaging up the 500 plus episodes into this conversational chatbot that someone can ask questions or solve a problem, get specific answers and like a, a thing back and forth. And I've not seen any podcaster do this or someone who's sitting on a ton of content, like as a creator, mm -hmm. really do it in this way. And I, I thought about it and I just figured out a way to create it quickly. And I shot a video that I didn't overthink and the editing's mm -hmm. shitty. <laughs> and I know I can spend a way more time on it. Didn't try to overanalyze copy, but I am pushing it out there. And it's purely for feedback. And it's also to share with others, hey, here's what's possible. And that's, yeah, that's that's at least the first thing that comes to mind right there. And I think it's going to help a lot of people. I think the reason like that got me to do it and to push it out there. And, and whereas like, if it's something else where I feel like it's not going to help a lot of people, even though like helping one person is enough, mm -hmm. even if it's myself, you know, to publish it, I think it motivated me more to get it out there. I think that's, that's what comes to mind for me. And so many other things that like, I have not acted on <laughs> for the opposite reason, I guess, but 
Good question. And that's one I'll reflect on more because I know there's a lot of things that, like you, sitting on the sand, deciding, oh, which one am I going to do today? <laughs> and it'll drive me freaking nuts. Yeah, you know? yeah. There's definitely a version of the person just getting sunburned sitting on the sand, <laughs> just like having a collection of surfboards. Yep. The quiver. Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. like, ah, cool. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't know to ride a single one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. And thanks for asking that. And I'm curious, and I've thought about this for a while, is like, how do you get connected? Like when it comes to collaborating with all these folks with your music, was that intentional? Is that something that you seek out? Or is it just like now you've created this kind of, you know, compounded thing where they come to you? I guess like, how does that work? And what's your mindset behind it? Yeah, I think that's great. I think it varies, right? You know, there are certain individuals that are very drawn to this. And so I've gotten a bunch of requests and curious. And then there, there's also other times when my gut is like, there's a song here. Mm-hmm. And so there's a desire to, you know, bring up the question of like, if if the, the other part of your individual is if that's actually intriguing and exciting. And there is a s- space of if you're creating something which, you know, is it art? Mi- yes, I'd say so. But it's more like this artistic creation. And if, if you're entering into that space, like, you know, one one man's trash is another is another person's treasure when it comes to art. And so, you, you know, like I'm just noticing that not everybody appreciates the same things, and it kind of takes a certain type of an individual who know who understands or at least appreciates the artistic process. But yeah, as far as how that happens, I you know, a lot of it is me depending on the time and space that I have and the desire. I'd say that's the greatest catalyst. But but generally it's it's almost like a like a we're doing it together where there's like a you know it's like a hundred percent like hand where no one's leading the other person but more of like yeah. we're walking together holding yeah. hands um, that's, the that's best. my yeah yeah because it, it's different than you know like a marketing opportunity or something else where I'm like I can help your business blah, 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 blah. and like you know it's a very easy clear outcome versus a song where it's like what is the utility of a song and it, a lot of it comes down to like you know so it's the same thing as what is the utility of art mm-hmm. in general which again it could be super profound could create a movement behind a song you know or it you know it could inspire one person and uh, so it almost requires you know the receiver of let's say this gift because that's what i view it as it's and it's not even necessarily me who's the giver but more you're you know mm. connecting to the muse and having a channel through you know it's like but just making sure that everybody understands that process and respects it. Yeah. Is music still meditative for you playing like the act of it? Yeah. <laughs> it gets further complicated. Like there was a time right. where I really liked listening to music and I do like listening to music, but my brain is more so figuring out songs because I, it's like being a TV producer, movie producer, whatever else where like you watch movies and it's not like you're experiencing it just as an audience, but you're experiencing it as like, well, Oh, is that why they did that technique or, you know, and in some ways it makes the experience more enjoyable and in other ways it makes the experience less effective for you, Mm -hmm. you know, unless you're, you're on, you're in a heightened state, you know, it's, and so the piano being on piano, you know, that's like a meditative thing, but like, it has to be the, if there's no pressure, that's, it's the key is like, if there's no pressure on me to like, I'm writing, oh, I have five hours to write a hit song or like I was in the studio two days ago, you know, you're booking studio time and mm-hmm. I have all the other things happening. And and sometimes I don't set myself up for success because I'm not creating the space of yeah. just letting them use in and making it amusing and fun. So it's something I'm reflecting on now of that. It could be more meditative when there's no pressure. And I, I've, I've had rituals where I'll write a song a day for just have 20 minutes of whatever the song is, is great. It could be a half finishing. It could be one note, you know, it could be a fart sound, yeah. whatever it is, like, you know, having no pressure, it, you know, except to make that fart sound, you'll need some pressure. Uh, <laughs> but having, True. you know, like it's just a calm time to create is super meditative and fun. Yeah, yeah, man. And I asked that because obviously you brought it up earlier, but for myself as well, like guitar every single day or music, I don't like to constrain now to just guitar because I love playing guitar and I find it so meditative if I have the space or if that space is created, if I'm not rushing it. And for me, it's not, you know, studio time, but it might be like, oh, I have a few minutes and my toddler's not going to yell at me for playing this music as she's trying to watch her whatever show. But now it's becoming a lot more enjoyable. Oh, I get to, she's also musical as well. It's a three and a half year old that yesterday I was like, 
I'm like, she's got rhythm. Like she was actually keeping a beat. And I was like, all right, just follow along. And I was like, chunk, chunk, chunk. And then she's like, dot, dot. I'm like, yes, <laughs> got it's it. Every, every dad's twisted fantasy of having a family band. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. It's going to happen. Hey, she, she's one. I'll come to that show. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, man. It'll be happening soon. And that's where I think it's such a, it's a, it's a cool thing. I don't know if it's a, I mean, you did it with keys and I've never really practiced as much on piano. My dad was a great pianist and, but with strings, like, I feel like that's very meditative, you know, it forces that hand-eye coordination, multiple th- different things happening with each hand, your mm-hmm. foot, you know, keeping, keeping pace. Yeah. But there's a lot to it there. And I guess, yeah. is, is there anything that you could share around that and maybe inspire people listening? Because I think this kind of segues to songwriting as well and what you're doing there and helping people with, I feel like channeling that muse somehow. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. So I, you know, had an experiment of running a songwriting retreat, not for super accomplished songwriters, but instead for any individual who has a hunch that they I mean, really what it takes is do you have a desire to write a song? Do you think that would be cool? And, you know, having a retreat for five days or so in a really nice setting where the muse comes out and it's more about play and creativity. And there's no, it's interesting because there's no pressure, but then our promise for this retreat is that everybody will write a song and perform it by the last day. So it's interesting how you have pretty high stakes for someone who's like never sang before, never written a song before, or individuals who have and just want to get to the next level. Uh, So it's like a high promise. And at the same time, we found the only way to get there is most time spent is more about like peeling the layers of the onion of resistance Mm -hmm. to then find that pure desire and that pure fun place of creation. So I'll talk about that, that experience in in a second. But yeah, as far as meditation goes music and it's more about doing something that lights you up on a daily basis. I was talking to a spiritual advisor, coach, energy worker, magical person. And he was sharing that a lot of times you just experiencing fun, levity, and, and enjoyment of any any sort, but like a playful, pure, you know, almost like, I mean, you look at your daughter, like any childlike joy, mm-hmm. uh, if there's anything that can give you that experience, it transforms your day and it transforms your outlook. And then you don't even realize that you can share that with other people. And it's like your cup has been filled. So for me, a lot of times there's different ways in which music can fill that cup and playing guitar is one of them. It's interesting with performance, right? So I have a show coming up. Uh, if you're going to be, I don't really know when this is going to be released, but you're, you're probably going to be too far in the future when you listen to this. <laughs> that show will happen, but there'll be other shows. So I have a show coming up and I've half-assed been practicing for it. Uh, and so sometimes practicing for a show and like getting less rusty as you're kind of playing songs and and performing them is not as meditative for me. But then once I pass that threshold where I'm like, wow, this sounds good. You know, and sometimes that takes like two weeks of practicing and you're kind of in in a groove. And all of a sudden I'm not thinking when I'm performing. You're just like embodying a song and that can be meditative. And you know, when you're performing in front of an audience, sometimes that can be a heightened state and it's like a blend of meditation with like chin taking and like intensity. It's a cool Um, feeling. Yeah. It's very unique. Yeah. So that, that would be a, a perspective there. I like it. What's that? Tell me more about the like peeling the onion, because that's that's something we all have to face in wherever, but especially when it comes to songwriting. I mean, I am guilty in that regard where I've like, I've tinkered around a lot, played in bands, but at the same time, yeah, the songwriting aspect of it. And and maybe we we kind of wrap the, the chat here is and talk about how that can fall into this retreat because i think you're doing something cool where you're bringing people together it's not necessarily a bunch of musicians but it's like all walks of life everybody has a song in us like we all have some a way to express it but how the hell do we get there yeah yeah so that that retreat this is the the third time we're doing it it's annual it's kind of my annual vacation in hawaii in, in hilo yeah. and so it's at a beautiful property it's from the november 15th to the 19th this year but we've done it in november which is selfishly around my birthday every year right at least so. and so you know so i wouldn't say by any means i'm like super expert at facilitating this all i know is the first year i did it it was an experiment and it turned out to be a peak experience from most if not all of the attendees. And I was like, wow, I think I'm doing something right. Some individuals were like, this was, you know, I spent X number of dollars on any form of personal development and discovery. And this was by far the most elegant and most powerful experience, you know? And then I'm like kind of humbled because I'm like, I don't know, I kind of kind of pulled it out of my uh, butt. Uh, but then, yeah, but then like, you know, the following year you're doing it again. And I'm like, oh, wow, some of this stuff that we created quickly has become really, really valuable. And you're like, oh, there's something there. 
which is that whole process of like, if the intention is pure from the beginning, and my desire was to create an epic, wonderful, one of a kind experience, then the rest comes a lot. It's a lot easier to ride that wave. I like to share the story. I worked with this very talented producer when I was first, let's, let's say transitioning from the band to solo music. And, you know, I had all sorts of demos, like certain songs I worked on for years. And it's like, I'm like, this is my little baby. It's, it's my masterpiece. And I'll share that. And then I also had done a songwriting exercise over 30 days where I was writing a different song in 20 minutes each time. Wow. So I'm sharing a catalog of music and, you know, you, you have to have a big soul to just listen to everybody's, you know, closet of music and see what is most inspiring. And so this one producer listening to the music, he was like, oh, uh, I really like this one song. It's great. There's another song, you know, it's not, you know, it's not really you. It's not that strong. And what he thought was great was the thing I wrote in approximately 15 minutes. The thing he didn't like was the thing that took me two years to work on. And I remember like, I was like, are you sure? Maybe you got them confused because this is, you know, there's this song and I'm like trying to talk this person into liking it, which, you know, it's always a bad sign when I try to talk someone into liking a song that never works out for me, but I still try. So he was like, no, like there was a purity and an essence to which is again that high art type thing yeah. to that one thing that just came quickly because there was no pressure or resistance and that was almost how that retreat came to be and that's also how a lot of people's best music tends to come to be it doesn't mean that's always the case like there's certain times where you know you spend two years on a thing and it's your best thing ever but it's more of like the the genesis of that idea how pure was it and how potent was the seed so you know i don't know if that kind of kind of answers in a way yeah, uh, yeah it's capturing it's capturing that element i guess that's kind of what we've been talking about the whole time is capture the the heart the essence of whatever that idea you know and, and cut it out of our brains or somehow ride that wave that we noticed and we're like okay i got this it's good enough and then go because yeah there's some purity to that without the overthinking and layering of other thoughts or outside perspectives, it's capturing you as best as possible. And I guess with the songwriting and the retreat, it sounds like it's like, all right, let's, let's strip away all the preconceived notions, all the stuff that you probably thought you have to do or should be doing, like fuck the shoulds and like do you and then get to your heart and see what shows up. Yeah. Yeah. With that retreat, we've learned that you know, again, it's it's kind of somebody's resistance to sharing, which is a lot of times like either stage fright or unworthiness or mm -hmm. feeling undeserving of actually being successful at a thing because at some point as a kid, someone told them or they told themselves that they shouldn't do it. So a lot of, you know, that let's say that uh, time together is about in a fun way, like uncovering those stories that are literally just blockages. And it's like, you know, if we think of, you know, the seed, so to speak, which is pure ideas, which is could be considered the muse or whatever else it's. It's more about firstly identifying which of those seeds are like, that's a healthy one, right? Mm, so, yeah. so it's first like understand, like identifying, oh, that's like, why the hell have I been planting that in my garden? <laughs> you know, True. so it's like identifying like the tree you want and then that seed. And then the other piece of it is actually like making sure that the soil is fertile. Mm -hmm. And with that, it's kind of like cleaning up the weeds and all the other stuff that's there, which is the, and let's say the little critters, as cute as bunny rabbits are, they'll still fuck up your garden yeah, um, shit so, everywhere. And then, yeah. 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 And so it's like a lot of that work is just cleaning up what else is around, you know, in your psyche. So that, and which is a lot of times confidence, self-assuredness and positivity. And like you have that and then you have the right seed and together it's like, you have, you know, the confidence to create momentum, which is like riding the wave, which is, you know, for you, it's birthing this AI bot generated component of this podcast and ideally helping a lot of other people to distill information in a way that can, you know, really change lives. So yeah, man. thank that's you. My att attempt at tying things together. <laughs> he did it wonderfully, man. Well, hey, let's uh let's shout out all the stuff that people won't say should, but if they would like to go down the paths, definitely it's easy to get stuck in your Spotify channel, Davy Harris. Uh-huh. Davy Harris. Uh, yeah. Any... D A V E Y. There you go. And yeah, Harris, what, two R's, two S's, I believe? One S. Ah, um, no, I'm a jack but who's counting stuff. besides <laughs> Just my, look it up. You'll my ego? Yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll link everything as always in the show notes. So talk about the the songwriting retreat too. Like a little bit more details there and how people can get a hold of you. Yeah. Okay, cool. The songwriting retreat that again, November 15th to the 18th in Hilo, Hawaii at the lovely Bliss Island Resort. All all inclusive. There's only a handful of individuals that the max attendees would be 22 and we already have a bunch of tickets sold. So it's kind of like more, even though it's months away, it's more of a last call of if this is something that really resonates with you. And if it does, then 
you know, just send a message to, to me, david at renaissancemessaging.com with, you know, the subject line retreat. And then, you know, I'd be happy to share more details and see if you're the, the right fit. It is a once in a lifetime experience. That's awesome, man. Yeah, definitely hit up, hit up Dave and also Renaissance messaging, as you just said, that's your, mm-hmm. your, your agency copywriting mm-hmm. and you do some other awesome stuff. So definitely in the marketing business mm-hmm. side, if you're interested in seeking out some stuff from Dave and his, his crew, I know you have a whole team too. So yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, like whenever I do interviews or something like this, if somebody is nice enough to listen and, and they, and they're inspired or whatever else, and you even want to have a conversation, the fact that this conversation is resonating with you makes me want to speak with you. And so again, you know, you should feel free to share my email address uh, and anybody who's even curious about having a conversation, it's fun to unlock more potent creativity in somebody else. And when that is applied to your business, it leads to, you know, like breaking through that ceiling, so to speak, Mm -hmm. you know, tapping into something more. And obviously if it's an artistic side, then that's even more fun. Yeah, it is. Well, it's all, it all works together. And I think it builds us all up and and sharing this is even better too. So everybody gets a little bit of the fruits, you know, they get to enjoy them too. So yeah, Dave, this was, this is a fun chat. You have been inspiring me on the musical front and getting that stuff out there. Now the songwriting front that's, that's next on the agenda. So yeah, appreciate you brother. And yeah, let's do it again soon. And I'm going to go nerd out and more your music videos get lost in those now that I just found them. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you for having me. Of course. You're very welcome. man. Have a good one. All right. All right. That's what I got for you today. And remember, it's not all about living to work. Ah, ah, ah. It's all about working to live if you need to do the work. But, you know, work can be fun and it should be fueling for your life. So if you enjoyed what you just heard, if you got some nuggets of wisdom that you want to share or you're just noodling on right now, please go tell others the way that people find this show and how you can help others get their aha moments is through word of mouth. So if it is telling your friend, telling your family, send an email to your list, writing a review or whatever it might be, everything helps. So thank you so much for listening to the Hustle and Flowchart podcast and I will see you next time.